Well, a very good morning to you. Thank you very much for joining us here on KTN News Centre on this 22nd day of December 2017. Hoping your morning is coming on well. Uh, for the next uh, 30 minutes, we'll be taking a look at the top stories we have at this hour and what we are following up on for you here at the newsroom. My name is Akisa Wandera. Five children die after an object they were playing with in Kiliwe Hiri, Mandera County, explodes. A 14-year-old girl who had run away from home in a bid to escape the harmful female genital mutilation practice finds a safe haven in Maralal. The African Union Commission lords Amisom's efforts in Somalia, describing 2017 a successful year. Those are some of the top stories we have for you here at the top of the hour. Now, the 2017 KCSE results have seen several academic giants flawed in Kisi region with former top performers resurfacing. Nyabururu Girls recorded its worst ever performance with a, with a mean grade of 6.5 A's compared to 7.3 in 2016. But even as Nyabururu was mourning, Rio Kindo Boys crawled back to its old days with sterling performance. The school had an entry of 117 students, of which 109 qualified to join university. Rio Kindo boys topped Kise County this year with a mean grade of 8.4, emerging position 36 nationally. Out of the top 100 schools in the country, and want to believe that in the Kise County, uh, we are now at the position 4. In Nyanza province, we are at the position 15. And I want to say that among the sub-county schools in the country, we are now at the position one. So how do you say that? We have, we have exponential growth, student population. And so catching up with the need for facilities become very difficult. And this is a challenge we've had. We've tried fundraising, but still we don't have a library. We, our lab is makeshift. So we are yet to go there. We also need a computer lab, which is a project we are hoping to implement next year. For teachers, I want to say that there has been very high levels of professionalism. I want to say that, um, unfortunately, the, there is something called uh, CBE, that is the curriculum-based establishment. It is meant to be 28. But the number of teachers for this school is only 14, those ones who are engaged by TSC. And uh, much of the work is done by these 14 teachers. We would request that if it is possible, let TSC support us. And I went to say we, we are supported very well by TSC. This school will definitely perform much better than it has performed this time. Well, and uh, even as the Giants continue to celebrate, the controversy over the just-released examination results continues to deepen. The Kenya Union of Teachers is now calling for the immediate recall of the results to allow for an audit. In a statement, NAT Secretary General Wilson Sosion decried what he termed as mass failure in the exams, calling it a fraud. Shadrach Miti has mourned that. <laughs> The Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education Examination results released on Wednesday showed that only 11.5% of candidates managed the minimum university entry qualification. According to the Education Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi, just 70,073. According to the Education Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi, just 70,073 out of the 611,952 candidates got C plus and above. We have improved by 1A, because last year we had 141 straight A's. This year we have 142. <laughs> but now the teachers' union NAT wants the results annulled, claiming they were not credible. In a statement, NAT Secretary General Wilson Sosion claims the results were irregular and most disastrous in the country's history, claiming they did not meet the international standards of measurement and evaluation. The statement continues to claim that the exams have destroyed the future of many children. That view shared by former education peers, Professor James Ole Kiapi. You're talking about half a million of, of students. Half a million. Last year, 
we, ha we had about half a million students who did Form 4. So this year, half a million, entire half a million, uh, are out of the university bracket. And that's a very huge number. And, and I think the ministry has to really level with the public in terms of, was the exam too hard? And if it was, why did they not allow uh, some element of moderation. Moderation is an internationally accepted practice. It is not a Kenyan practice, it's an international practice. The universities have recently increased their intake to over 90,000 a year, and stakeholders worry that these institutions will operate below capacity owing to the failure rate in this year's KCSE. In the last few years, we have been expanding university spaces, both private and public universities, we do have enough space, not even to, con you know, uh, we enough space to take roughly 80 to 90, even 100,000 students. If you consider the parallel program, you can easily take in 100,000 students. Now we are only going to take in 70,000. So Sion's sentiments are echoed by Ray Lodinga, who is calling for the formation of a task force to investigate the mass failure in this year's Form 4 examinations. In a statement, the NASA leader urged the Minister of Education to address concerns raised by parents and teachers' unions, saying the finding that close to 90% candidates failed is worrying, adding that as the country commits resources to free learning and scales up enrollment, the whole purpose and value for money is lost when close to 90% of those students eventually fail. The question is, where are we going to take this number of people? Because you have to look at examination in terms of who is going to go to university, who is going to go to the middle-level diploma colleges and certificate colleges, and who might go to village polytechnics. But that is a huge number of people. You're talking about half a million of, of students. In 2015, 88,929 students qualified for university. Last year, Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement Service placed 71,089 students in public universities, while 17,368 joined private universities. Shadrach Miti, KT News. Well, and as the successful candidates continue to celebrate in Migoria, villages in mourning after a girl there committed suicide for getting what she considered a poor grade. Karen Onyango scored a C- minus after going back all the way to Form 3 to better her grade. It is alleged that she quarreled with her parents before the results were released. Friends and family gather at the home of 22-year-old Karen Onyango, a candidate in this year's KCSC exams. But instead of making merry, they are mourning. Karen is dead. According to the family, the student at Moenya Bohansi Secondary School committed suicide by throwing herself into a well. It is alleged that her parents were disappointed after she scored a C- in the 2017 KCSC results released on Wednesday. So when the results came out through the short text message, I sent her to the kitchen, but I saw she was not happy with it. She is a child who really respected me and I did not want to disappoint her, he says. According to the family, the diseased harbored dreams of being an accountant. In 2015, she scored the same grade at a different school and went back to Form 3 in her new school in an effort to better her grades. Residents are still in shock over the incident. Most of them held high hopes in the deceased. It is very much shocking because uh, here in our village, we, we only have few ladies who make it to uh, high school and uh, perform better the way Karen did it. We, we, we really expected much from Karen and we knew that Karen was going to be a very, very prominent lady in our village. Ladies who have gone to school in our village, they are very much, you can only count them, they are countable. 
Migori County Police Commander warned parents against piling pressure upon their children over exam results, a sad twist to the results that have now sparked controversy in the sector. George Maringa, KTN News. <laughs> The five children died yesterday after a grenade they were playing with exploded in Kiliwehiri, Banisa constituency in Mandera County. The children aged between 12 and 17 years were playing with a grenade they had found in a grazing field. According to Deputy County Commissioner Matthias Kisambo, uh, the grenade uh, might have been left behind by former colonial soldiers. Now, Archbishop Jackson Ollis, a Peter of the Anglican Church, has called on Kenyans to unite, love, and forgive one another as a way of reconciliation for the country to develop. Sapit uh, says uh, the only way to build the nation after a divisive and prolonged season of uh, politics was reconciliation. The clergyman is calling on leaders across the political divide to embark on a healing process by bringing all Kenyans together despite their diversity as one of the ways of embracing the Christmas theme of love. He was speaking in Nakuru during the conferment of a doctorate degree to the Nakuru Diocese Bishop Stephen Mushai. And uh, as we celebrate this Christmas, it should be unique the way we do it in Kenya. We know we are just emerging from a very tough moment, a very long, prolonged election, and which we have concluded. And now that we have uh, the president and the government uh, being set and formed, uh, it is our prayer that uh, now the message of Christ uh, Christmas which is reconciliation uh, of God to man and the man to man will become a reality in our nation. And I want to urge all of us to embark on the uh, journey of healing. Jesus came as a healer, journey of showing and demonstrating love to one another. Mm. He came because God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. We also want to demonstrate uh, that message of reconciliation, which is the theme of Christ's coming so that we are reconciled back to the Father and are reconciled between ourselves. And this will be our message for Christmas. Moving on, controversial preacher Gilbert Dare is finally out on bail and a Ruby court has finally granted bond terms to the evangelist who has been behind bars since August the 4th this year. The successful bond reapplication through lawyer John Swacker was granted when it became clear that prosecution will not be able to finish its case within 120 days set by the court as there are still many witnesses lined up to testify. The court previously denied the international preacher bond on grounds that he was a flight risk. In light of this, the court had undertaken to conduct Dare's case within the shortest time possible, directing prosecution to finish its case within 120 days while granting him bail. Milimani Chief Magistrate Francis Andai directed that the preacher pay a bond of one million shillings and two sureties of a similar amount. The Miracle Babies Bishop will also have to deposit his travel documents with the court and report to the police station twice a week. His lawyer, John Swaka, undertook to personally be liable should the preacher abscond court proceedings. <laughs> A 14-year-old orphan in Marala who was due to be married off after being subjected to female genital mutilation has been rescued. The class 7 girl from Barasloi village ran away from home after realizing that there were plans to marry her off this December. She reported the matter to the police and is currently safe at Bishop Palo Rescue Center. Justice Leoto, who has been an anti-FGM ambassador, decried the increase of such cases in December. He urge the community to ditch the harmful practice and embrace alternative rites of passage, adding that all children, including girls, have a right to education. Wakatiu ni me rescue wa tisa na huyu ni mstana ambaya takuwa mstana wakumi ambaya nta ni me rescue na alikuwa nampango familia alikuwa nampango akum keketa ama kumta kumfanyia tohara ili apate kuolewa na kiolewa hiyo maisha yake inaharibika lakini yeye saisi hako pamoja na mimi e, tuna, tunaendelea kwenda kutafuta njia ya kumsaidia apate kusoma nasomea ngameru children's home there kwenye wana wazazi and uh, i do come to holidays and i came to holiday and I stay with my grandparents, 
and they told me that they circumcise and then I had a story of being married of it. In real sense, I knew it's not good for my health. So I had to save my life earlier. And I thank God that the pastoralist community in Northeastern is now calling on President Uhuru Kenyatta to consider creating a ministry for them as he prepares to name his cabinet. Addressing the press in Garissa town, the chairman of the Livestock Marketing Council, Dubat M.A., said that the pastoralist community population is currently estimated at about 10 million, translating to nearly a quarter of the country's population. Dubat said the 14 counties in arid and semi-arid lands region counties voted overwhelmingly for the president and its leadership and in return need to be rewarded. He emphasized that the ministry to be named pastoral economy should be headed by a qualified and competent person. Revolution, they will come in these asal areas, in these areas where people make a living out of livestock. That ministry will be coordinating, will prioritize our development. I think if I'm not wrong, it is time. Ime Pambazuka. It is time for this ministry to be created. Even in Uganda, our neighbor, there is the Ministry of Karamajong Development, which actually addresses only pastoralism. Ethiopia, Sudan. We, we, there is all the justification to create this ministry. Well, the Ministry of Northern Kenya and other asset areas was created, but it had no funding. It was headed by Ilmi. The documentation he has done, if only that one was implemented, it would have improved our, our lives. But you know, that time there was no devolution. So with the devolution in place, with the Ministry of, uh, with the ministry of uh, Pastoral Development, which will actually be Pastoral Economy, I think uh, the rain will start raining. Moving on, the special representative of the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Ambassador Francisco Madeira, has described 2017 as hugely successful year in the fight against the Al-Shabaab, but cautioned that there were challenges facing the transition from the multinational force to Somali security forces. The SRCC named the successful conclusion of the electoral process that saw a new parliament and senate culminating in the election of a new president as some of the milestones achieved by the African Union mission in Somalia, Amisom, in 2017. Addressing a media briefing in Nairobi, Ambassador Madeira said some of the challenges Amisom faces include the death in funding and uncoordinated, uncoordinated training of Somali security forces by different partners. The reality is that Amisom and the Somali security forces face major challenges due to unpredictable funding. Without funding, in other words, without proper funding, little can, be, can happen to move forward with certain undertakings already made on the security force, on security front. front. Militarily, subject to logistical support, we are planning elaborate offensive operations, mainly in the Juba Valley, Gedo region, and middle Juba regions which still harbor pockets of Al-Shabaab militants. In a nutshell, we need urgent support. Our troops are ready, but they need to be resourced. This has not been happening to expectation, despite repeated commitments by partners in different fora. We are planning to hand over to a properly capacitated SNA at least 10 forward operating bases next year as part of the transition. Discussions are ongoing with the federal government on modalities of this handover. 
members of the Gema community from Western Kenya, from uh, Central Kenya, have criticized the Jubilee Party for sidelining them, led by their National General Secretary, Paul Kenyanjui. They say since 2013, when President Uhuru Kenyatta and his uh, deputy, William Ruto, won their first term election, they have not been considered for government jobs. Kenyanjui says uh, they have uh, given uh, the two a 15-day ultimatum to give them an year before they decide their next course of action. The members were drawn from North Rift, Trans Nzoye, Kakamega and Bungoma. Watoto wetu wale wamesoma, hawapati kazi. Ile mambo ya minority katika katiba yetu, hakuna kazi watoto wanafanya. Na kwa hivyo nauliza president, atuonyeshe baada ya sisi kufanya kazi uh, gumu sana. Watoto wetu, wamesoma, wako nyumbani, watapata kazi na mnagani. Hawapati ya askari, hawapati ya hata ya ofisi. Sisi watu ambao tumetoka North Rift na Western Diaspora. Kwa sisi tumeumia miaka yote. Wakati tulikuwa na President Kibaki, alimaliza miaka kumi yake bila kutuita hata mkutano moja kujua shida zetu ni gani. Tunapoongea sahi, laisu wetu ambaye tunampenda sana huru kinyata, hamemaliza five years. Na hakuna mahali ya metuita sisi kama watu ya diaspora kujua ni nini shida yetu. Sisi tumeumia sana kuliko watu wengine wowote. Kwa sababu hakuna mtu ambaye na jali ni nini tunafanya. Tumekua ni kwamba sisi ni mashina wakati ya kura peke yake. Ndiyo tunambua kwamba kuna kikuwa na kaa uko western, kuna kikuwa na kaa north rift. Lakini wakati watu wanakawa mamunaka hatupati. Sisi tunahitaji kujua tuko mikononi mwanani. Kama governor waititu. Wakati ya nasema 70% ya waandikwe wale watu wanaishi kiambu. Yeye ya nafikiria governor wakakamega, governor wawasingishu, governor wakisumu na governor wanandi. Atafanya nini? Tunamuuliza buwana waitito, mugawa wetu wayo, kwa hiyo 70%. Wale watu wakiambu wako inje ya, ya kiambu, mugawa wao huko ndani ya hiyo. Uganda's parliament has approved a constitutional change that will allow the current president to run for an unprecedented sixth term in office. After three days of debate, MPs voted overwhelmingly to remove the age limit of 75 for presidential candidates. It means 73-year-old President Yuri Kaguta Museveni, who has ruled for more than 30 years, can seek re-election in 2021. A two-term limit was cropped off in 2005 to allow Museveni to stand for for a third term, but that limit has been reinstated following criticism that Museveni could now become president for life. His supporters argue that Ugandans can always vote him out of power. That our own constitution, which is supposed to be durable, as it is stated in the preamble, has been amended just like that. This bill is like any other normal bill. It's not special. It's like any other bill. And to us, it is no more business. There's nothing strange about it. The bill will not help this country because even some few, NRM, they have already gained from this bill. But Ugandans who are suffering like us, we are not going to gain anything. It is just for only seven, for the one who is going to gain on it. But as a Ugandans, we are not going to gain even any single thing. The journey we are going to embark on is the journey Koji Kuteko. What next after you have touched the Constitution? What next after you have broken the hearts of Ugandans? All right, uh, that's how we wrap it up at uh, this point on KTN News Center. Up next is Behind the Headlines, but I'll be coming up at 10 a.m. to give you more news updates as they come in. I am Akisa Andera. Have yourselves a lovely morning.